Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. So this show I'm calling the Not Valentine's Day episode. Hey, Valentine's Day is this week. Um, I'm doing three Italian wines, two of which were donated to me, one of which I did purchase. Um, could I call it the Valentine's Day special? Yeah, I guess, you know, but it's really just, hey, these are three wines I need to review. So instead of me going out to find, figure out hey, what wines would go great if you decided to do Valentine's Day dinner at home? I was like, screw it, I, this, I, I got a review done. So this is my review of Italian wines uh, for, the sh for uh, this week. And if you'd like to maybe use these for maybe a nice romantic Italian Valentine's Day dinner, go right ahead. All right, so the Not V-Day special. All right, so the first wine we got going on here, I uh, purchased this from Som Select. This is the Cole Masari. Montecuccio, Montecuccio 2012. Um, this is uh, a Tuscan wine, and Montecuccio is in the kind of southern, southeast part of Tuscany. Um, it is between, uh, blah, 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 where do we say it was? Right? It's between uh, blah, 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 blah. uh pff, where is it between uh, the Mari the Mari Mama or whatever it's called down there and uh, um, Montalcino. So it's in that in that vicinity, um, it it got its um, DOCG status. I uh, no, sorry DOC status uh, in. Oh, I thought I had it in this thing. I think it got his DOC status like in 98 or whatever. 98, there it is. Um, and it's kind of considered maybe like a value um, region for Italy for Tuscan wines. Okay. Um, this wine, though, does, I did purchase it for $28.28 on Som Select. So it's not a cheap wine by any means. Um, let's see. Uh, the region is well known in Italy though it doesn't have the same recognition internationally. And uh, I feel like it got darker in here. Anyway, um, which it should be impossible because these lights are all powered by, ele by electricity. And you know what, it did get darker. That's because, that's because the thing turned on so it drained some power for a little bit when the uh, compressor turned on. All right, so... Um, Let's see, what else? Uh, this, this winery was named Winery of the Year 2014 by Gambero Rosso, uh, Italy's most prestigious wine organization. Uh, it is aged for 18 months in a combination of vats, barrique, and tonneau. Uh, so basically those are larger barriques. Barriques are the traditional Bordeaux barrel, um, and tonneau are about twice his size. And then you have vats, which are Okay, um, plus another year in the bottle. Let's see, uh, it is comprised of 80% Sangiovese, 10% um, uh, Chile, Chile Giolo, I think is how you pronounce it. It's one of those weird grape varieties. It's you know totally Italian and probably has a billion synonyms depending on what part of Italy you're in. And 10% Cabernet Sauvignon. Oak is 50% New French Oak and they uh, do organic farming. Let's see here. Um, and then 50% uh, 50 new French oak, 50% in second and third, uh, you know, two and three year old barrels, and then you know, one year in a bottle. All right, let's check it out. So color, 
Um, looks very similar to that Frontera, uh, color-wise. Um, though it's not so much of a watery rim, it's pretty much the color's pretty much all the way through to the rim. Um, but definitely a deep red. Much more like a red rather than a garnet. A little bit of staining on the glass. Huh. I guess floral on the nose, but like more red fruits. Um, a bit of minerality or earthiness. This is this kind of use a better term than minerality. A little bit of earthiness on it. I'd say, um, almost like mint eucalyptus, maybe you can be like almost like a minty chocolate, um, nose to it. Red fruits, maybe cherries, maybe chocolate covered cherries. And, you know, a little bit of wood to it. I wouldn't necessarily say cedar box, but kind of woodsy. But very, very, very slight. There was some red flowers to it. But yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, a, kind of like a peppermint patty um, aroma to it also. It's pleasant. Very pleasant. Let's check it out. My tongue more than my gums, but even my gums drying out. So I would say medium plus high tannins. Um, acidity is also pretty high. Um, mouth is watering a lot, not from being dry, but just the acid in the wine. Oh yeah. The Marama region near the Mediterranean Sea. That's what it is. Yes, I know phone. I mean, I know watch. Um, it's kind of fleshy on on the on the palate. It's, it's fourteen and a half percent alcohol, so you can kind of feel the alcohol a little bit. But it's not too terribly hot. Um, it's it, the palate and the nose are very much the same. You know, red fruits, maybe a hint of chocolate, um, a little bit of, of wood. I don't get a lot with Italian wines. I will typically get leather felt dust. I don't get any of that. Um, I, I think I would think this was a um, old world wine. because there's enough of that non-fruit aroma and flavor to take me away from New World, which tends to be more fruit forward. Um, but I don't know if I would guess that this is a Tuscan wine. Now, I didn't mean to bang on the microphone there. Um, as far as exam purposes, for the advance, would I get a wine like this? Probably not. I would, they would most likely give me either a Brunello or a Chianti. Um, could I confuse this for a Chianti? I don't think I could. Um, it, you know, we'll see. I mean, because I have, this is Chianti, right? Yeah, I got a Chianti coming next. So we can compare the two because they're from the same area. And actually all three of these are Tuscan wines. So that's actually very cool. So we're gonna be able to um, try out three different Tuscan wines and see how they taste. So it's a good wine. I mean, it's almost 30 bucks. 
it's worth the thirty dollars. But uh, I'm kind of interested to see what these are. So let's move on to the next wine. So my little thing here. To wine number two. Wine number two. This is the 2011-2011 Nipozano Reserva uh, from Chianti. And it's not just Chianti, it's Chianti Rufina. And um, Rufina is just a sub-region of, um, it's a sub-region of, uh, whatchamacallit, um, Chianti. And don't ask me where it is, as I failed to look up where it was in... Um, in Tuscany or Chianti in general. All right. So this is made by the Frescobaldi people. Frescobaldi's been around since forever. Um, I think they said that the company itself, as far as Frescobaldi, has been around making wine for 700 years. Um, but this particular Winery uh, dates from the mid 18. Oh, uh, suggested retail price on this was donated. Suggested retail price on this is nineteen dollars. Um, so dating from the mid 1800s, Niposano Reserva's label contains a piece of Florentine history. So I'm going to guess that uh, Rufina Rufina is near Florence. Um, the uh, the well, at least the. Uh, uh, Frescobaldi's are. I know that much. Uh, Florentine Albizzi's family last heir Leonia's wedding to Angiolo Frescobaldi is represented in the Central Coat of Arms. So, Central Coat of Arms. Um, symbolizing the unity of your family, solidified, blah, blah, blah. The two concentric circles in the middle of the Coat of Arms represent the instrument used for carding wood, the ancient Florentine guild by which the Albizzi family made its fortune. The noble crown sits above the family crest. The eight-pointed cross denotes membership in Santo Stefano, an ancient chivalric order founded by the Pope and post deum in the coat of arms signifies the role of religion at the time. And then uh, there's a castle in Niposano. Um, and uh, so, yeah, this is... Uh, it's, it's just east of Florence. I looked it up on the map. I didn't look at sort of like Rufina for the Chianti stuff. Um, so it was a castle uh, there, and it was part of the defense of Florence. And um, the first documentation about the renowned wines in Nipposano dates from the Renaissance, when great artists such as Donatello and Michelozzo Michelozzi regularly purchased wine from the estate. A unique feature of the territory is attributed to the foresight of an ancestor of the Frescobaldi family who in 1855 invested 1,000 florins, I have no idea how much that is now, but I imagine it's probably a lot of money, uh, to begin the cultivation of varieties previously unknown in Tuscany, such as Cab, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Petit Verdot. So they must have been influenced by that 1855 classification, I'm going to guess. Um, after more than a century of patient care, these magnificent vines produce the great wine of the, of the estate. And uh, it's in the heart of the uh, of Chianti Rufina on the mountainous side that overlooks the valley of River Arno. And they say there's perfect balance of a bunch of stuff with soil and altitude and climate. And then. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else with the... So the family start in wine production for Frescobaldi is uh, 1300 at the historic estate of Tenuta di Castiglione in Val di Pesa, southwest of Florence. All right. Um, and according to the website, they've always demanded quality from their wines. And uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they were faithful clients. And then in the 1500s, Frescobaldi wines were served at the tables of the papal court in the English court of Henry VIII. All right, so lots of lots of stuff about this. Uh, it didn't tell me exactly what grapes are in this. So we're going to, and I didn't write it down anywhere. So it is a Chianti, so it has to be majority 
Sangiovese. You can have other grapes in there, but it has to be majority Sangiovese. It could be 100% Sangiovese. It doesn't, um, it can have other grapes though, but I don't remember, I didn't see how much was, uh, was Sangiovese and what wasn't. So let's, uh, let's sniff it up. So on the nose, um, not really a lot going on on the nose. I mean, I get a little bit of, um, I get a little bit of uh, <clears throat> red fruit. Not a whole lot else. Maybe a bit of, you know, wood, maybe some potpourri. Here we go. Almost mintiness. Yeah, kind of like this one, I got that peppermint patty thing going. I get a little bit of that. Medium plus tannins. Uh, City is also pretty high, which is normal. It should be for these wines. You should have high tannins and high acidity. Again, kind of just red fruit, maybe some cherries, um, a bit of wood. I mean, it's, it, 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 it tastes good. I like the wine, especially for $19. Um, but I'm just having a hard time really getting a whole lot out of it. Like, you know, this might be something where you really need some food to go with this wine. Uh, to really, you know, enhance it. When I sniffled, basically, when I, I got something like, almost like stewed meats a little bit off that. I mean, I can see maybe a bit of roasted meat, not stewed, roasted meat in that, but it was it was more because I breathed in really heavily, whereas I don't really get it. But no, it's not a bad wine. It's, it's a $19 bottle of wine. I could easily drink this with some food, um, with dinner. Um, it would go, it would go well. It's not, it's not unpleasant. It's not sharp. It's not, it's, it's, but I just don't get, and maybe you know, maybe I just need to try it another time. But I don't, I don't dislike the wine at all. But I'm like, I don't really. It it, it kind of doesn't really give me anything, and and I and I don't have, I can't really describe it. Um, it could be just my palate. I totally could be my palate. This could be like, you know, the best wine ever from this area of Chianti. Um, but um, and I like I said, I like the wine. But I, I just can't really quantify. It's weird. I hate that. Especially with red wines. 
Usually white wines are the ones that have the problem with maybe like describing flavors and aromas. But this one, and let's try it one more time. Let's just get a little bit more in here. Not a whole lot. You know, maybe it takes a couple, you know, a little bit longer. Can you see the little, the gas in there? It's not a bad wine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this when drinking it at a restaurant or drinking it at home with, with dinner, but I don't feel like it's, it's really, it's, I don't feel like it's powerful. I think it's, you know, I feel it's medium body. I mean, it's like, yeah, I got the good tannins really on my gums right now, but I just think it's, it's a wine that will pair with lighter fare. Like you can't really have it with anything really heavy or else it's going to be overpowered by the food. Um, but you could drink this with lighter fare easily. So let's move on to wine number three. All right, wine number three. This is the 2012 La Vite Lucente. This is a uh, just a Tuscan wine, so Toscana, uh, IGT. Um, so that's the 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 basically not the lowest level but of, of the better quality wines it's it's the lowest level ah, there we go of of the of the chain however lots of super tuscans are igts because they don't follow the rules for grapes all right so um this is also owned by frescobaldi and longtime viewers of the show might remember that I interviewed um, Joe at Luce Restaurant. They're not affiliated with this, but it you know they have Luce wine there, and this is the same winery, Ugh. the Luce winery. Uh, they started in uh, oh it's twenty four. Okay, so this vintage. On wine.com was $24.99, but you cannot buy it anymore. You can get the 2013 for $23.99. Um, sorry. All right, so Luce was started in 1995 with uh, Vittorio Frescovaldi and Robert Mondavi. Uh, continued by their sons Lamberto and Tim, who Tim Mondavi is the gentleman that started, you know, after the whole Mondavi blow up with the board and blah, 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 and they kicked everybody, all the family out. Um, Tim started his own winery called Continuum, all right? Which I've got to visit uh, in 2014, and it was an awesome visit. Really good wines, out of my price range though. Um, the first wine was released in 1997, and it was a vintage of 93 and 94 uh, grapes. Uh, 2004, um, uh, Lamberto took over the entire operation himself. Uh, I'm going to guess that way Tim could concentrate on Continuum because I think that's around the time that, or short, right, shortly before that is when all the Mandavis got kicked out of Mandavi. Um, the logo is based upon an image from the main altar in Santo Spirito Church in Florence. This is considered their second wine. So, got Luce. And then you got Lucente. So, uh, you know, at 25 bucks, basically, this is their, these are the grapes. These are really good grapes, but they weren't good enough to go into Luce. Um, same vineyards as Luce, aged for 12 months in the Luce della Vite estate in Montalcino. It is a Merlot Sangiovese blend. 
fermented in stainless steel. It's 55% new French, 5% new American, and 40% one year French oak as far as the aging. And uh, didn't say how many months it's aged in here. Let's see if it says it on the back. Uh, nope. But uh, this is from the Montalcino area. So all of these are pretty close to each other. Well, these two are close to each other. I mean, not that this is hundreds of miles away, but. All right, the color, much deeper, intense red color. Um, all the way to the rim. A little bit of sediment, I guess, or maybe that's from the cork. I mean, I'm using the, using the thing. There might be some pieces of cork coming through the uh, needle, which can happen. Um, decent amount of staining on the rim. Okay, so right off the bat on the nose, I feel like there's definitely some earthiness to it. Honestly, it feels like there's some SO2 in it. We're going to dump it. Okay, then we're going to pour some more just to, uh, now normally when, uh, when I've opened the bottle of wine and I get that SO2, um, aroma, if I do this and pour another, pour another glass, it usually is fine, but I haven't notice this with the Coravin. So, let's try it again. Yeah, I, maybe it's not SO2. It's, it's, it's definitely earthy. Yeah, I think I'm confusing sulfur with like just kind of earthiness. It really smells like wet earth. But I mean, it kind of has a smoke bomb element to it. That's why I'm. That's why I think there's maybe a little bit of sulfur. Darker fruits. But it's definitely dominated by earthiness or non-fruit aromas. Then, fruit maybe. Like I said, you know, like like. Wet, wet earth, wet forest floor. Maybe if I didn't stick my nose all the way in, maybe if I try to get some of the more delicate aromas up here. See up here, I don't get all that. I get a little bit of fruit to it. Again, just red fruits, nothing, nothing specific. They may be just finally blowing off. And there's like a another quality to the aroma that's, that's pretty good. Can't I can't put my finger on it though. Let's taste it. Remember this was sent to me, so this is my favorite of the three. We'll put it that way. Okay. Hmm. Massive, massive tannins on the gums. Um, a little bit of fruit to it. There was felt like there was like maybe a touch of sweetness, like fruit sweetness, like not real residual sugar. Um, at first, almost a little bit of creaminess to it. Um, yeah, like like a, like it's almost like a cherry pie um, flavor to it.
Still a little bit of smokiness to it, um, but not a lot. But it feels juicy. It, like my mouth is watering like you wouldn't believe. So it's got to be high in acid. I mean, this is a this screams for food. Like I need to eat food with this. I can't just. I couldn't just sit there and watch TV or watch a movie and only drink this wine. I mean, I, it it begs for food. It really does. Like whether it's a great Italian dish with a thick red sauce, meaty red sauce, or you know a juicy steak. Um, pot roast, that kind of thing, you know, just stuff for stuff for the, the wine just to play with in your mouth. Like you just, the tannins just need something and you're, because it's killing your mouth. Not really killing it, but you know, it's definitely, it's definitely a powerful wine. Um, it, these two, you know, are more easy drinking. But it, it, I ended up drinking them in kind of an order of, I guess, body. This was uh, kind of the lightest, but this was about the same. And this one was like, oh, but it's good. Um, flavors, like I said, red fruits, um, maybe a bit of cedar box, a little bit of cherry pie, um, has a little bit of creaminess to it. Um, it's good wine. And I think... At 25 bucks, it's the best of the three. And it's nothing to do with the fact that, you know, Luce is the name of that restaurant and they, so they serve this wine there. Um, this is, I, I think this is the killer. This is the killer wine of the three. Um, no offense to these two, but, you know, if, if I hadn't drank this one, I'd be like, yeah, these are good wines, go out and buy them. But then I drank this one for the same price effectively as these two. And I, I would... But then again, let's think about that. If I was going to have like juicy steak or pot roast, not this wine, not this wine. If I was going to have, say, something lighter, like maybe a roasted chicken, um, maybe a, a filet mignon uh, rather than a ribeye or something with lots of flavor, um, you know, maybe a, a, a pasta with a light red sauce, not a bolognese, but a light red sauce then these would probably be better choices. They'll be really honest than this one. This one would be overpowering that dish. So let's kind of think about in perspective what you're gonna drink, what, why you're drinking it, if you're drinking it with food or not. And, and I wouldn't want these wines with you know, thick, juicy steaks or, or, or dishes with lots of fat in it, um, but I would have that one. So they're all good wines. This one just appeals to me a little bit better. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. Just again, I want to thank everyone for stopping by, and I uh, really appreciate it. Um, as always, friend me up. Click the links above the friend me up. If you want to send a few donate uh, ducats to donate, excuse me, hit the hit the donate button on the PayPal section here. Leave comments below, either here or on YouTube or whatever. Um, hit iTunes, leave me some five star ratings. helps uh, helps with the uh, helps with the ranking of the of the podcast. I am the only video wine show on iTunes, and uh, check me on the iFood iFood uh, TV app on Roku or whatever. Uh, I should be on TiVo. I need someone to confirm that with me because the only the person that could confirm it with me, his TiVo isn't is, isn't uh, uh, compatible with the new version of all this stuff. So um, he no longer can watch it. He can't even watch it on YouTube on TiVo. So it's weird. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. We'll see everyone again next time.